Hey guys, welcome back to Reserved Investments on YouTube. And please pardon the acoustics, I am shooting in a different room of my house. I just wanted to change up the scenery, given the fact this is gonna be kind of a different kind of video. Um, rest assured, we are going to finalize the 3,500 subscriber Q&A series, so don't worry, those videos are coming soon. And then we are gonna go into other topics that I'm not gonna mention on camera, because I'm still finalizing those particular videos as we speak. What I want to talk about today is I got contacted by a company who deals in investing in collectibles through fractional shares. Now, those of you that have spent any time watching the videos that I produce on this particular channel will know at present time, and I got to state this, at present time in December of the year 2020, I am not currently a fan of investing in antiques and collectibles via fractional share investing. You don't know what fractional share investing is. There are companies out there that are taking a $100,000 painting or a $60,000 Incredible Hulk 181 in CGC 9.8, and they're allowing the average Timmy, the average Kimmy, the average Poindexter Jr. out there to buy just one share and get some ownership of that particular item. Now, why am I against this? Well, the antiques and collectibles trade and investing in the antiques and collectibles trade is by far an illiquid venture. What do I mean by that? If you hold stock, if you hold bonds, if you hold mutual funds, if you hold ETFs, even if you own cryptocurrency, if you have those assets in some type of brokerage account or investment account and you click the sell button at any given time, Literally within 72 hours, whatever price that security was trading for when you click that sell button is what's going to be deposited in your account. With antiques and collectibles, they are generally a liquid. And there's risks when you go to convert an antique or a collectible to cash. You have market risk. You have credibility risk. Meaning if you list an item on eBay, you can get scammed. Somebody could buy that item, they can file a complaint against you, they may very well find a way where they get to keep the item and they get their money back from paying you for that item. So there are risks there. If you can sign that antique or collectible to auction, there's usually a several month, if not a full year turnaround time, by the time that item gets consigned to the auction house, goes up for auction, and you get a check from that particular auction house. There's also obviously consignment fees, seller fees, and the like. So investing in antiques and collectibles overall is a very illiquid venture. That's why I tell people, you cannot put all your money in speculative illiquid assets for the long term. It does not work. I don't care if it's Pokemon. I don't care if we're talking about rare coins. And you guys know, if you watch any other videos on this channel, I love rare coin investing. You should not have 100% of your assets in rare coins, antiques, collectibles, comic books, whatever it is, it is a bad idea. Well, ironically, I got an email sent to me at reservedinvestments at gmail.com, which is the email that I use for this YouTube channel and also my consulting business in the antiques and collectibles trade. And I'm not going to name the company that reached out because I consider that to be very tacky. I'm not trying to put them on the spot. But I do want to read you some of the email that I received so you understand what's happening in the wonderful YouTube sphere at present time where a lot of these companies are trying to forge partnerships with content creators like myself. Hey there, how's your day going so far is how this email starts out. We've partnered up with company X. Again, I'm not going to name the company name. An awesome platform that allows you to invest in and buy and sell shares of rare collectibles. We would love to work on a paid sponsorship with your channel Reserved Investments. We believe your content is great and your audience would love to know how with X company it's possible to invest in shares of item out of all but the wealthiest people's price range. Now I'm not going to go on and read this email. I'm just going to close with how they closed it. We're looking for creators to do 45 to 90 second integrated mentions, highlighting how X company 
Gives everybody a chance to invest in high-end collectibles and cultural assets. Love that term, by the way. Cultural assets make it sound really, really, really phenomenal on the antique side of the trade. Love that terminology. Now, I turn this down and I'm actually going to read you what I wrote as a result of that. I wrote back, hello, thank you greatly for your email and interest. I am aware of your company and presence in the collectibles universe. In fact, I have commented on the subject of fractional share ownership in the collectibles marketplace before on my YouTube channel, reserved investments, and also in the articles I write in the trade for major publications. At present time, because your company is relatively new, I would prefer to take a wait and see approach to what you are offering. If over the next year or so, you are viable and I can see some of the results you are obtaining for your direct investors, I would consider looking into this again. Please feel free to reach out to me at that time and I thank you for the opportunity. Any questions and concerns, please let me know. Sincerely yours, Sean, founder of Reserved Investments. Now, why am I sharing this with you? Because if you recall, guys, one of the things that I do not like about YouTube is how hype-driven it has become. You know, I'm going through my YouTube feed and I'm seeing videos coming out from people that are stating, let me show you how to open up a Pokemon trading card collectible business in your house. Or let me show you how to flip magic cards and you can make 100, 300, up to $1,000 a week just sitting in your home flipping magic cards. I'm going to be very honest, guys. The reason why I offer collectible consulting in this realm, there are no shortcuts. There is no way to get rich quick. I don't care if you reach out to me and ask about flipping real estate, penny stocks, whatever it is, guys. There are no shortcuts. You're not going to get rich by spending $30 to own a piece of an Incredible Hulk 181 in CGC 9.8. You're not going to get rich by buying booster boxes of Pokemon cards over the next few years to the point where you're going to make enough money to go out and buy a Maserati in most cases. So why am I having this discussion with you? Because I consider it very troubling that now we have companies out there that are catering, I hate to say it, to the Timmys, the Kimmys, and the Poindexter Juniors out there who think that because their favorite content creator told them that, well, gee, investing in fractional shares of collectibles or opening up a Pokemon business is the way to go. And you're really going to make a lot of money. You're going to be able to quit your job. You're going to be able to live the life that you want it. It doesn't work that way, guys. Be very careful of the content you consume on YouTube, on other platforms. I've said this before. There's a lot of market makers and market manipulators out utilizing social media, just like I am right now, talking to you guys and convincing you that this is the next big thing. Whatever that next big thing is, um, whether it's cryptocurrency, whether it's penny stocks, whether it's Pokemon cards, whether it's Forex trading, whether it's flipping real estate, whether it's investing in video games, or even rare coins for that matter. The antiques trade is not immune from this either. I know sometimes a lot of my critics out there make it seem like I'm biased against collectibles because me, myself, I tend to invest in antiques more than collectibles for the long term. That's because I understand how these markets operate. But just like you, I have a passion for a lot of this stuff, which sets me apart from the average collector, investor, or speculator out there is I have the knowledge and the means to understand how these markets operate. That's why we're going on almost 200 videos now. All the content that I produce for you guys is free of charge right here on YouTube. There's no videos hidden behind a Patreon account. There's no videos hidden behind a paywall or any other means. I create honest content for the people out there that have a passion towards investing in antiques and collectibles and to a lesser extent, other asset classes as well. You guys already seen some of my other videos. You know I'm a huge fan of mutual funds, index-based funds, and to a lesser extent, individual stocks. 
I love investing in Wall Street as well. The content that I produce is 100% honest and comes from the bottom of my heart. So I wanted to use this as an example to respond to my critics out there who think that I use this platform to promote my consulting business and or to get ad revenue. Spoiler alert, I do use this particular platform to promote my consulting business in the antiques and collectibles trade. And also, I'm not gonna lie, I did monetize this YouTube channel, so I do get ad revenue. But I will never, ever take on a partnership or sell anybody out for something that I do not believe in 100%. You have my word. So I just wanted to do this video to show you guys that even YouTube channels with 3,700 subscribers actually get emails for sponsorships. And the smart money or the smart content creators out there are the ones that can literally critically analyze these opportunities and say, is this something that I really want to stake my reputation and my ethical credibility on? Again, that's nothing against this company that reached out to me. I want to be very clear. But overall, it's an unproven concept. Again, if you guys want to Google Merrill Lynch Athena Fund, you'll see what happened back in the late 1980s when Wall Street thought it would be wise to peddle fractional share investing in collectibles and antiques to the masses through the use of an Athena Mutual Fund. It did not work out very well for them, and it also did not work out for their investors as a whole. Could these companies that are doing something different today revolutionize the market? And maybe in a year or two, there's something that I see that I really like and I'm really ready to recommend to my clients in the antiques and collectibles trade and also the viewers of this channel? Yes, that's always a possibility. And if that happens, you'll hear about it here first. Thanks for watching. Have a great night and stay safe.